in this episode of American Greed. Madison Square Garden. The legendary venue has hosted the world's biggest pop stars over the years. But in January 2018, the garden stages a different kind of star. Here comes Adam, and he's like 6'6", six, six. he's got his long wavy hair, he's usually got his black leather coat or a white t-shirt. He comes out and he just takes over the room. Hello, Remorg. Hello, global citizens of this earth. It's Adam Newman, the founder and CEO of co-working company WeWork. Newman has gathered 6,000 employees, including Don Lewis, for a WeWork Global Summit. It's a corporate retreat that feels a bit like a revival meeting. You're a member of the new generation. Make some noise. He gives off positive energy. He makes you feel alive. And he sounds like he truly believes in what he is saying. When you do something that comes from the heart, when you find your passion, you bring it together with intention. It's like when you turn on that TV channel and there's like some televangelist and they call someone up and they touch them on the head and like, oh, you're cured of cancer. Like it was almost that vibe. After a while, Lewis needs to stretch. And I go to stand on a wall and a security guard for the Madison Square Garden place comes and stands next to me. And he was an older black man. He must have been about 70 years old. He's like, hey, you work for this company? He's like, what's, what's this? what do they do? Like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, you know, they give office space to people all over the world, and they try to help companies, you know, come together. And he's like, well, this is quite a presentation. And then get a little further, further along the conversation, and he's like, brother, can I ask you a serious question? And I said, sure, ask you whatever you want. Is this some kind of cult? <laughs> <laughs> actually, I actually started laughing. Why is the security guard asking questions that billionaire venture capitalists are not? Adam Newman's story begins in Israel on a kibbutz, where he spends his middle school years living with his older sister, Adi, and his mother, who is a doctor. He loved aspects of the kibbutz life, but he thought it was inherently unfair because everything was shared. Even people from the kibbutz days have said he wanted more. They made it, he was very, even then, focused on sort of attaining wealth and thinking really big. Adi, on the left, grows up to become a famous model. And in this Israeli TV footage, never before seen in America, Adam says he's going to follow his sister to New York. <laughs> Rocking a look fit for Soho, Adam and Adi shove off for the Big Apple and move into a high-rise downtown. Later, he will say that at first, he finds New Yorkers self-absorbed and unwelcoming. And I would go up and down the elevators with 15 floors, and I would notice that no one would say hello to me in the elevator. And I asked my sister, I said, is this an American thing, or do people really not want to talk? Adam says he challenges Adi to a game. Whoever makes more friends in a month wins. Let's each find one apartment that we can go unannounced, because being Israeli, you're used to just going to your friends, knocking on the door and walking in, unannounced, and we'll have a cup of, uh, we'll have a cup of coffee. And for the next month, we all introduced ourselves to different, we did, it was 15 floors, she got 12 floors, I got three floors, she also was a supermodel at the time. And <laughs> it's okay. In the story, he's technically the loser, but he tells it with the je ne sais quoi of a winner, and thereby trumpets one of his extraordinary talents. He is a complete genius at connecting. People who would be in the apartment at the time, people who lived in the apartment say that, you know, Adam, even then, was always, like, you'd come into his apartment, and he's like, let me tell you about this business idea that I have. Newman launches two businesses that fail, and he finds himself with the ball and chain of a lease at this building in Brooklyn. Around this time, through mutual friends, Newman meets a young architect named Miguel McKelvey. He and Adam would go on these long walks and just sort of brainstorm ideas. Adam was, you know, always just restless, always hungering for the next big thing. Adam knew that, that co-working existed. And he started saying, what if we just took one of these floors of this building that we're working in? We could subdivide it. We think it could be a great business. 
Newman is encouraged by his wife, Rebecca, who will later portray Adam's potential in heroic, even mystical terms. Oh, yeah. When I met my husband, um, he couldn't buy me dinner really? or even afford a taxi. Really? <laughs> I just knew that he was going to be the man that was going to hopefully help save the world. He can manifest anything. Mm. He can literally make things appear out of thin air. Never seen anything like it. Wow. Yeah. With Rebecca at his side, telling him to shoot for the moon, Newman and McKelvey strike out on their own. They call their new venture WeWork. It really felt like the start of an era. Lisa Skye is WeWork's second employee. That means she does a little bit of everything. I was the founding community manager, is what I have on my LinkedIn profile, but that meant I was responsible for sales, tours, billing through our QuickBooks software system, IT, because my IT person was in high school at that time. So I was in the data closet connecting the wires to make sure people could get their internet use because that's most important. And whatever needed to get done, that's what I was doing. It was fun, it was really intense, it was around the clock, but people you know, felt like they were all together building something huge. WeWork signs long-term leases with landlords, usually for large urban lofts. Then they subdivide the space into small glass-walled units. They'll make money as long as they pay less in rent to the landlord than they collect from all their tenants, which WeWork calls members. Why would you take out a five-year lease or a 10-year lease? We'll give you a month-to-month -month lease. We're going to take care of the receptionist. We're going to take care of the coffee. I used to say you have a bigger commitment to your cell phone than you do to us. They'll charge you $150,000 cancellation fee. We'll just let you go with 30 days notice and give you your deposit back. And the second part of it was they were selling the coolness of the space. They were selling the vibe. The common space, you know, kind of looked like a rainforest. <laughs> Justin Zen runs a startup from his kitchen, which happens to be in Hell's Kitchen. When he needs more space, there's one obvious choice, the place where startup dreams are made. They did a great job uh, just selling that pitch, right? If, if you don't want to be in a boring, uh, you know, old-fashioned office space, come to WeWork, and we're going to make your life great. WeWork expands quickly, and a positive buzz surrounds Adam Newman. He starts hanging out with titans of high tech and seeing how well they're living. WeWork is growing fast. But to keep growing in the world of New York real estate, it will need cash, lots of it. So the reason why WeWork became WeWork and why Adam Newman became Adam Newman is because of venture capitalists. Venture capitalists provide a company with seed money in its infancy, and if it grows big, the VCs will see outrageous returns. That's the story of one of venture capital's most legendary players, Benchmark Capital. And one of the very first deals that they did is they backed a small company named eBay. And this thing paid out like crazy. It ended up making $5 billion in profit. And so all of a sudden, everybody knows who Benchmark is. In 2012, Adam Newman gets word that a Benchmark partner named Bruce Dunleavy would like to meet him and take a tour. So Adam's very well known for giving these tours of WeWork space, and he loved to give these to investors, and it was part of his sales pitch basically to them. You know, come walk through the space, you'll see what this community really is. A lot of folks talk about how Adam used to activate the space, and what activating the space meant was that when an, an investor would walk in to the building, all of a sudden there'd just be this impromptu party. It was very calculated, but he always sort of acted as if this just happens all the time. Essentially, it was get people on the floor. We don't care how, we don't care what you do, just get people on the floor. And the investors in general were awed, really, walking around. And that was the case with Bruce Dunleavy. He came, he flew from San Francisco to New York. He was skeptical it was a real estate company. Venture capitalists would much rather invest in tech companies because tech can scale up 